there's an introduction, which we've already covered. What are you managing and how? So let's talk about the different types of work that you're managing. Also, Microsoft's planning and team productivity tools. All right, then from there, we'll get into a roadmap for PPM maturity. I'd like to give you an Office 365 overview and what tool to choose and when, and also some use case scenarios. And then we'll end with a Q&A session. I do have my chat window open, so um, I can answer questions as we go on. But as I get into my presentation, sometimes I get a little uh, distracted, and I will promise to answer those questions towards the end, though. And if you do have any questions after today, you can always reach out to us. All right, so we have a lot to cover today. There's a lot of new tools out there, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, one of our learning, our learning objectives today I'm really primarily focusing on, there's so many tools for me to show you, but I'm not going to be able to show you them all today, of course. We're going to follow up with some subsequent webinars in the future, depending upon your input and what you um, would like to see. But I do want you to be able to take away from this, understanding the different tools that are out there, being able to distinguish which one is the right fit for the type of work that you're managing, the teams that you're managing, and what you're trying to accomplish, all right? So really just determining what tools to use and when, all right? So that's our learning objectives for today. All right, so let's go ahead. We have some session goals, of course. Um, we're going to increase your understanding of these tools, equip you to start today, and make the most of your time, all right? So these are compact. Um, they're only an hour long so that you can join and get back to your to your true day job there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what you're managing, all right? Is it task management? Is it work management, project management, or project portfolio management, all right? So your task management, that's more of the me work. That's an individual task that I'm managing through its life cycle. It may be very important to my company, but I don't have any team collaboration. I don't really need or require anybody else's um, input on that. Work management, gets into your software products and services, um, and applying a workflow or a structure around those, all right? Um, and then project management, if you have any PMPs on the call, um, please feel free um, to email us regarding PDUs because we are a registered PMI provider, uh, education provider through PMI, excuse me, so you can claim those. But this project management, uh, section will speak to you, right? You understand the different life cycles or the different er uh, phases of your project. You're going to manage it through, it's the discipline, right, of that project management of initiating, planning, executing, controlling, and closing to achieve a very specific goal, right? Your criteria is well-defined and you're managing in a more structured um, environment, typically. Your project portfolio management that's a centralized management of both the processes, the people, the um, tools that you're using, uh, at the project managers, and the PMO. So it's, it's the management of everything and trying to collectively organize um, that information um, based on key uh, ca characteristics and making sure you're doing the right things for the right reason there. All right? All right, so what are you managing? And then the next thing we're going to take a look at is how you work, all right? So there's the me work, which is those individual tasks, the we work where you're maybe doing some ad hoc projects and collaborating with groups, um, department resources, a more structured, larger group, all right? A greater, um, a greater effort um, that's more global to your organization. And then the company connection, like how are you consuming the content and how are you um, using that to make better business decisions. Now, the me work, we work, department and, and company connection, all of these things are gonna come into play. So what are you managing? How do you work? And then how do you decide on what tool is right for you? Well, one of the things that you need to take into account in today's world is the fact that uh, we have different ways or different, you know, when you were growing up and you went to school or you went to college, you know, or you have children, you know that each child has a different learning method, right? Some are visual, some are more, I want to read it, some are, I need to do it. Well, our teams are very much like that. 
in that um, we have maybe baby boomers that are more emailed and uh, they want to have meetings, et cetera. And then you have your, your Generation Z or your millennials, and they're looking more towards face-to-face, um, -face, you know, real-time, IM, instant messaging and chatting. All of those things need to be taken into account when you're trying to determine which of the um, suite of tools within Microsoft you're going to select. Now, there's a tool for all uses, and there's a tool for every type of team dynamic that's out there. So it's just a matter of understanding what you're trying to manage, how you work, and how your teams work so that you can make them the most efficient. All right, so let's go ahead into a little bit of a PPM roadmap. And then we're going to jump into the actual tools in just a moment, all right? So this, this is a roadmap to PPM maturity, all right? So we, when we always um, reach out or, or, or have in conversations with prospective or new customers and clients, we always tell them that we have this crawl, walk, run approach, all right? So we don't want you to just dive into the deep end and try and use all these tools and force everybody in your organization to um, jump on board, all right? You're going to start out slow, all right? Maybe you're just throwing together some ad hoc projects and you need to do it quickly and very efficiently. Well, there's some tools that will get you up and running, but then as you mature, in both your usage of the tool and also your processes and your project management methodology, you'll eventually increase your opportunity to where you get to the enterprise level, all right, where you're managing portfolios across many different business areas or, or groups, all right? So, but don't, we want you to start out slow, all right? So that's an important thing to take into account. But I do have a couple of questions for you, and you can chat, um, type your answers into the chat window. Um, some of you are not muted. Uh, I can hear that, so um, you don't necessarily need to vocalize your answer. Um, but go ahead and, and put them in the chat window, all right? So my question is to you is, what are you using today, all right, to collaborate, all right, or to manage different efforts in your organization, all right? And this is an important question because how do you know who's working on what, when things are due, when they can, if they can be completed on time, or if people are working on the right things at the right time? And the reason why I'm asking that is I get a lot of different answers on this when I go out to customer sites. And this is a big problem because what, what I'm hearing from a lot of organizations is, well, it really depends on the project manager. It depends on the business area that I'm working in. Some, some prefer Google Docs or a shared drive, um, but that doesn't communicate with our SharePoint site. So I have to go, and then I have to read through a ton of email threads to figure out where we are in a specific point in time and what we're working on. So a lot of wasted time sometimes, and also um, a lot of emails. There's a lot of emails going around and around. Um, we also have meetings to plan our meetings, and then we have follow-up meetings after that. All right, so probably not the most efficient use of your time, and wouldn't it be great if we had a bunch of tools that could actually talk together? And that's what we do now. In the Office 365 suite, that was Microsoft's answer to that, was the introduction of all these different tools and making sure that these tools can communicate with each other so that you're no longer operating in a silo, all right? So getting out of that, let's use this one tool for this type, and then let's go to a SharePoint site where we have our documents, and then let's follow up on email and meetings, et cetera. So being able to integrate the Office 365 tools that are out there um, is huge, all right? So bringing people together and making that collaboration much, much more simplified. And what's great about this is that if you subscribe to Office 365, you automatically get all of these tools as part of your, your enterprise or your business subscription. Now, there is one on this page that you will not get out of the box, and that is Project Online or Project Professional that does require a separate um, subscription. But we'll talk about that towards the end and why you might want to invest in that, um, why you might need to take it to that step. All right, but all of these tools exist. In your organization, if they've deployed Office 365, you might not even be aware that you have them and that you um, 
and or even how to use them and how they can connect and communicate with each other. All right, so, and after today, I mean, this is going to be high level. I mean, we don't have a lot of time to get into great depth on all of these tools, and I understand that. I don't want to leave you with more questions than when you came, but I do want to leave you with a better understanding of which tool is a good fit for different sort scenarios. And then if you still have questions, email us. Hey, we're open to coming out or meeting with you for an hour and walking through some scenarios. You tell us. How do you work? How do you manage? How do you collaborate? What works for your organization? What do you think will work that you're just not utilizing? We'll help you get started. So please, just go ahead and um, email us at info at ppmworks.com, and we'd be happy to do that for you. All right? We've been doing this for our customers and our clients. We have that experience behind us, so we'd love to get out there and help you. So one thing that's not pictured here on this slide is Microsoft Groups, all right? I want you to think of Groups not as a, um, as a function, not as a tool, all right? Because what Groups does, it's the glue that ties all of these tools together, all right? And what Groups does is it creates um, a, a manner for you to organize your mail and your calendar, all right? It gives you the ability to um, create a SharePoint site. Um, it gives you the ability to use Teams where you can collaborate with a set number of people, all right? So you can do all of these things through groups. Groups is a way of you, a way for you to um, sort of maintain security around who sees what or just limit your information to those that are pertinent to the effort that you are um, engaged in. All right, so groups is the glue that ties all these different things together. And we're going to take a look at these different tools, and we'll go through some scenarios on why which one might be a better fit. All right, so Office 365 groups, as I just said, um, when you create a group, you receive a shared inbox, you receive a shared calendar, a shared document library, a shared OneNote, and a SharePoint team site. And all of these are automatically created if you create a plan in Microsoft Planner. All right, so Groups, again, is the glue um, that holds all of those tools together. You do not have to manually assign permissions or create the resources for any of those um, tools that I just showed you when you create a group. It's automatically done for you. All right, now Groups also can be public, which means it's um, available, it's open to the entire organization, or private, just a set specific number of people, maybe those on the team that are working on that particular project or that effort, all right? Now, you can actually invite others outside your organization to join your group. Um, don't, uh, and if, if that scares you, so if there are anybody, uh, any administrators or anybody from the PMO that's on the call, they might be thinking, oh, I don't really want to invite others from outside our organization to see uh, what we're working on. You know, I don't want to open that up. There is a way to, by configuration, to turn it off, all right? So you can shut that off. So I don't want that to scare you in any way. All right, but there's a lot that you can do um, within, uh, with the concept of creating a group within Microsoft. One of the first things I'd like to talk to you about, though, is Teams. This is new. This is huge. At the end, I'm going to share some, as I go through this, we're going to share some of the, the new um, announcements at Ignite. So the Microsoft Ignite conference was in Orlando this week, all right? Great, great conference where they release all sorts of news and information about upcoming changes and things that you can expect and enhancements to existing products and new things that will be coming coming down the in the next year. All right, and one of the things that they're really pushing for is the Microsoft Teams. And it's actually, um, you'll see on the, the little uh, emoji or um, character, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, comic there, it says that's so cool. And it, it actually is really cool because what you can do is when you create a team, you're selecting a group of people and you're able to collaborate directly with those people. And it's, it's chat-based. So for those millennials and those Generation Z folks that really like to have that instant messaging and, and have that real-time collaboration, Teams is a really good fit. Um, what it'll also do is um, 
provide that real-time collaboration. So if you're co-authoring, you can upload files and documents to your team site, and you can all co-author at the same time. All right, you also have the ability of um, using connectors. Connectors can connect you to other tools, tools that are outside Microsoft, Jira, Salesforce, Twitter. Okay, so imagine you're planning a marketing event, all right, and you need to, um, you want to use social media to share that. Well, you can connect with Twitter to get your message out, all right, so a lot can be done within these teams. And then there's also this bot integration, and it's this little T-bot that's there on the site just waiting to help you, and you ask it questions, and it brings up answers for you and tutorials, and it's there by design to help you get started. So don't be afraid to jump in and test the waters. The T-Bot is there to help you, all right? And there's also some customizations that you can do with that T-Bot. Um, not going to get into that today, but it's there to help you get started in here. So Teams, to give you an idea of an overview, and this is this is really exciting stuff, guys, because what you can do here is I can get in here, I can create a team, I start adding people to that team, I can chat one-on-one -on -one with the different members of my team, or I can open up the chat to everyone. I can create a meet now meeting where a meeting gets sent out to everybody and they can join the meeting. So it integrates directly with Skype. And what it's going to do is they're improving upon Skype for business, but Teams is really designed to overtake what you've been using um, Skype for business now so that you have everything within this one tool here. So I can set up um, a visual voice um, uh, conference. I can just have an audio conference or I can have that face-to-face -face chat with my customers because I can invite them if I need to or just with members inside my organization. So we can have an impromptu meeting and what's great about this is that anything that we're working on, so if we're documenting, um, it has the ability and it's going forward, there's going to be improvements to this tool where it's going to have voice recognition. So right now, WebEx probably has an icon next to me as the host saying that I'm speaking right now. Well, Microsoft Teams is going to do that as well. So you can record the conversation and who said what, and you no longer have to read through a very lengthy email thread to understand who's working on what and what's going on within this endeavor that you're managing here, all right? So it's a way for you to take what you may have been doing in separate applications, such as emailing everybody. Maybe you had a SharePoint site where you had a document repository where you had all your files located, all right? So all of those things coming together in one centralized location so that you can use it very quickly and efficiently, all right? So again, making sure that you're using the right tool for your team, improving how you work. We don't want to um, tell you, hey, what you've been doing doesn't work, but certainly you have the ability to um, improve upon your collaboration. And this is something that's really going to be exciting too. And within Teams, you also can add um, apps and apps such as Power BI. So if you want to pull in a Power BI report, um, you can certainly pull that into your um, team site as well. All right, so there's a lot of things that you can do within here without having to um, leave the site and navigate somewhere else. So pretty, pretty cool stuff. So I encourage you to get in here, start using this right now, and then uh, be ready for those new enhanced uh, audio and visual um, video uh, improvements that we're going to be seeing very shortly, all right? So it does right now use Skype for Business when you're in Teams and you want to create a meeting or you want to have that um, audio uh, conference with everyone, uh, and those those tools are being greatly improved. So there's going to be some really cool stuff in here, all right? so. I'm going to show you a slide that kind of gives you a breakdown on how you can organize your team's site right now. Uh, there you can see it's a pretty busy slide, but basically you have your organization and then you might be having, within that organization you have certain teams. Um, if you look to the left, you'll see that one team has three different channels. So I gave the example earlier of um, event planning. 
So if, if this is an event planning team, maybe I have a channel for marketing. I may have another channel for logistics and scheduling. And I may have a third channel for venue. All right, and I could add as many channels as I want to. And if you're wondering, well, how many people can I bring in to my team here? Um, what's the limitation? It's the, the limitation is 999 people. So you can bring in a large number of people to be a part of this team. All right, and again, if I'm using that event planning, if I wanted to add an app um, to this, I might consider Twitter, Facebook, um, and it can also connect to Planner, too, so I can list out some specific tasks, and I'm, I want to track those tasks and make sure they're being completed. All right, so all within the channel, I document my conversations, I have any files that I need, my meeting notes or notes that we've been um, passing back and forth are right here. I don't have to go to OneNote. I don't have to go to my email to find that information. And I can connect whatever we're working on with outside applications like Twitter, Facebook, to get the word out there. All right, so pretty cool stuff there. So again, Teams is chat-based. It's highly collaborative. Um, it could be for ad hoc meetings. Um, it also um, is great for uh, specific events that you're working on. All right, so that's an overview of Teams and some of reasons why you might want to use Teams to manage and collaborate with your uh, team. Yammer, all right, let's talk a little bit about Yammer now. So Yammer is completely different from Teams, all right? It's a private social network. It's only within your organization, all right? But if you can think of it as this way, Facebook for work, all right? Um, I know if, um, for those of you that might use Facebook, you put a post out there, you're not watching to wait and see if someone replies, although I do have some friends out there that I do think are completely glued to Facebook 24-7. But for most of you that are on this call, you're a little bit too busy for that, right? That, this is more of a, it doesn't have that chat interaction. It's really for sharing information. Um, sometimes when we come across something that has tripped us up and we were struggling with and, hey, I found a workaround to this, I'm going to post it on Yammer for my entire organization so everybody has access to that information right away. It's also great for crowdsourcing. I don't know who to ask in my organization. Maybe I have an organization that's global. We have offices all over the world, and I'm not really sure who to go to for this answer. Well, I can post it on Yammer, and then the correct person or the appropriate person will respond back and let me know and say, hey, this is where you can find that documentation, or hey, let's set up a meeting and um, talk about this. All right, it is secure, which is great, so it's only visible to those within your organization. And you actually can post documents to Yammer, and others can get in there and co-author them and, and post documents as well. So you do have that capability within Yammer. But Yammer is very different from Teams in that Teams, again, it's chat-based, so it's real-time uh, collaboration, whereas Yammer is more um, let's share the information with everybody um, or maybe just a specific group, uh, but it is not real-time. All right, so a little bit different. All right, now Skype for Business. Skype for Business is uh, what we are currently using for our online meetings, but with all these new releases coming out with Team, um, we're going to be switching. We're going to start managing our internal meetings using Teams. Uh, why not, right? Um, let's have our weekly meeting there. Uh, we can store all of our files, our notes, our documents, our meeting minutes right there in one location. Um, but Skype for Business has been our go-to um, visual for voice or video calls. You know, it's IM, so it gives you that real presence so you know who's, who's available and who's not. So I can take a really quick peek and see if I have a question for someone, who can, who's available to answer those questions. So I love it for that. I could be at a client site. I could be working on something and somebody asks a question and, you know what, I don't always know the answer. That's okay because I have a team of uh, competent, educated people behind me so I can shout out and, and find the person that, that does know the answer. Um, I love Skype because I can schedule meetings. 
as a consultant, it's huge for me because I can schedule a meeting with someone that seems to be struggling with something that's outside my organization, and then I can make them a presenter. Hey, show me what you're doing. I know you're trying to, you're trying to tell me in an email, but something's definitely getting lost in the translation. Let's talk this through. Show me what you're doing, and let's figure out how we can how I can help you, all right? So I do love that, all right? So it, it's great for that. Uh, but Skype for Business, it still will be available, but teams will be, you, I would say, start looking for teams to be taking over for that, all right? So it, Skype for Business will be available for some organizations, but they are, Microsoft is really pushing for using it within Teams and enhancing the, the audio and the video capabilities and so that you can use it within the Teams. All right, but again, great for IMing, great for screen sharing, great for having those ad hoc impromptu meetings. Hey, let's meet now. Why don't you show me what you're doing? All right, so, all right, so, planner. This is relatively new, and I get a lot of questions around planner, especially when folks are project managers. They're asking me about what, what's the difference between project online and planner? How do I know when to use one over the other? How do I, how do, how do I understand that? All right, and I'll tell you this, Planner is great for a bunch of things. One of the things that it's really good for is um, if you're agile and you like Kanban boards. If you like those, um, Planner will display those for you. But here's a big um, new announcement that came out of Ignite. Um, Planner is going to be, and they just started rolling out integration with Project Online, whereas you can link um, uh, assignments in Planner to actual tasks in a project. So there is that integration. It's being slowly rolled out to um, different customers. So if you have it, you'll see it in Project Professional. You'll see Integrate with Planner. It's a new command um, on the ribbon. If you don't see it, then it just hasn't been rolled out to you yet. But that is going to be huge integration there. The other big announcement that I think is huge is that they've been saying, and, and they've been talking about this for a while, but now it's real, Project Online is going to have some, and Project Professional will have Agile um, introduced. So they're going to help or adjust um, Project Online and Project Plan, uh, Project Professional, excuse me, to help you for those agile projects that you're managing, all right? So they, Microsoft has heard that not everybody plans their projects using a waterfall methodology, that there are different approaches out there. So all of these things are really coming together, all right? Um, another reason why I like Planner is it's very easy to use, all right? So let's be real. Um, most of us are in charge of uh, an activity or an event or something that's going on, but you may not be a project manager, all right? So you don't consider, at the end of the day, you wouldn't consider yourself to be a project manager. Some of you may be, but some of you may not be. So having to learn project professional or project online might be very daunting to you because there's a lot you can do within that tool. And you might be thinking, hey, I'm the VP of marketing for my organization. I want to be able to assign tasks to people and to be able to see whether they've been working on them, when they've been completed, when they are due. I want to have that visualization, but I don't want to have to learn a project management tool because I'm not a project manager. I want to focus on what my true passion is and but still be able to to make sure that I'm effectively collaborating with my team. And Planner will help you do that, all right? So there's so much that you can do in here. You create a new plan. When you create a new plan, that concept that we talked about earlier, groups, is automatically created. So when you create a new plan and you bring people onto your team, you have a group that is associated with that plan. That will then create a calendar, It'll create a group messaging for your email. It'll organize, um, it'll also create a SharePoint site in the background. You'll have a SharePoint site that's created so you can upload files to Planner 
and keep, um, keep track of them here. So you can co-author. Uh, you don't have to go to a separate library to retrieve that information. It's all stored here. So it's really, really good for um, keeping your team organized, keeping everything in one central location. And I have the ability of creating a task, assigning multiple people to that task. I can give it a due date. And I can also see little reports and charts on how we're doing. Are we, uh, have we started any of these tasks? Has anybody done any work? You know, we can see that within Planner. All right, so it's really, really good for that. Let me take you through a couple more slides so we can take a look and see what these uh, look like. All right, so very interactive. All right, you can get in here. Um, you can uh, add additional detail, charts, files, um, whatever you need to do, you can add it to your plan in here. And then these are the, this is your planner hub and charts. All right, so you do have some charts in here that you can see to track people's progress. All right, so again, being able to um, see what people are working on, making sure that folks are working on the right things at the right time, and tracking whether these things are getting done, all right? So it's a great tool for that. So I do get a lot of questions from people that still, okay, that's great, I hear what you're saying, but why wouldn't I just pl uh, manage all of my projects in Planner? Why would I need Microsoft Project or Project Online? Well, the answer to that is it really kind of depends. I mean, for one thing, the planner, um, the plan is not configurable or customizable. It is what it is, all right? So if I want to provide, um, and it also is very specific to the plan, right? It's an individual plan. I can organize tasks into buckets sort of like a, a work breakdown structure, if you will. So I can organize tasks into buckets in one plan, but again, it's very specific to that one, um, that one thing that we are all working on, that one project, in other words. I don't have an overview of all the projects that others are working on, or an overview of percent complete across all of the projects that are out there, all right? So I lose that visual um, ability, all right? So if you're in an organization where you have executives or you're the PMO, and you're like, this is great for my individual project managers, but I really want to be able to see everything. That is when you're going to want to leverage um, Project Online, all right? Giving you those portfolio level views, being able to also create a workflow so that, um, you know, you have maybe an ideation portal where you're tracking every project idea and you're vetting them. Not everything um, is promoted to a project, but when it's ready, we can take that idea from a list and create a project from that. We can then kick off a workflow that goes through an approval process, all right? So if your head's spinning, that sounds like way too much and you don't need that, okay. That's fine, then stick with, you can certainly start out with Planner and see if that brings you, um, gives you the collaboration and the visibility that you need. But for those that may be a little bit more mature in their project management or need that visibility, you wanna be able to run a report that shows you how much do we spend on resources by department last month? you know, something like that. That's when you're going to want to take it up a little bit, um, take it up a notch and bring it on to Project Online. Now, the other big thing is issue and risk management, all right? So Planner is not going to help you track issues and risk, right? This is a built-in functionality, though, for Project Online, all right? When you create a project and you publish that project, automatically, well, depending upon how you configure the solution, you can have a project site automatically created when you publish that project for the very first time. And that project site, by default, out of the box, has issues and risks, all right? And this is the ability for you to track your issues and risks. These are actually captured in the reporting tables. So you have um, issues and risks tables that you can pull into reports. So you can see all the issues and risks across all the projects. So if you are a PMP and you are managing issues and risks for your projects, then you're probably going to lean more towards Project Online because that's going to give you that ability to do that. 
All right. Now, remember, though, that I did say that there is going to be some integration between the two. So I could start a project in Project Professional, and I can link a task in my project to a plan in Planner. So I could have team members um, working on these uh, plans in Planner. I can then uh, can, because I'm linking and connecting, I can uh, track the progress of that information. So a lot of times as project managers, we don't want to get too far in the weeds. We don't want to get too granular in our details and our project plans. We want to um, keep them as, well, as simple as possible without getting too cumbersome. You know, if you have a project that has a thousand lines in it, that's going to be very difficult to manage. All right, but these smaller efforts, you can track those smaller efforts or action items in a plan. All right, so it's sort of like the best of both worlds, if you will, merging the two of those in there. All right, so again, um, behind the scenes is the concept of Microsoft Groups. That's the glue that kind of holds all these tools together. All right, from there I showed you Teams. Teams gives you this chat-based, um, collaborative, real-time collaboration for you to organize your team, all right? And then Yammer is when you really want to crowdsource and want to put some information out there, either asking, uh, I don't know who to ask this to, but has anybody ever experienced this and how did you solve it? That's a great um, use case scenario for Yammer. And then also um, Skype for business. You know, having those IM uh, instant messaging, being able to connect and have those impromptu meetings um, right there from within one tool. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some use case scenarios and compare some of the things that you can and cannot do across different tools. All right, so here's the use case scenario number one. Kelly Kraut, the VP of Public Relations. She leads a marketing effort. Hmm, sounds familiar, right? We were just talking about this a little while ago. Um, it's a marathon, and she has to do a press release. All right, so she has to write a press release, and she doesn't want to do it by herself, so she has her team collaborating with her. But it, t it tends to be very tedious and complex. She's using email, and she has to read through a lot of email threads, um, go through, uh, make some ad hoc phone calls, et cetera. She's having a tough time. She wants to be able to capture all these notes, co-author, real time, collaborate, all right? So in order for her to be able to do all that, one of the tools that we talked about at the very beginning was Teams. That would be a really good fit for her, all right? So this would be a great opportunity for her to create a team to collaborate on this endeavor, all right? So her, the marathon, she can break that team down into different channels, who's working on the press release, who's working on uh, the logistics uh, for maybe um, the path that the marathoners are taking, security, et cetera, do we have sponsors? All that can be done within Teams there, all right? So that's a great opportunity to use Teams. Um, this case scenario, all right, multinational plastics manufacturer, Contoso. For those of you that are familiar with Microsoft, Contoso is a fake organization or company that was actually incorporated by Microsoft. So Contoso is a real fake organization out there. All right, um, so they are trying, um, it looks like they had a chemical spill, oh boy, and there's an emergency procedures that they need to incorporate. So how do we get started? We probably need to do this pretty quickly. Um, Jeff Hay is the VP of operations, and he needs to coordinate with the London-based office, all right? So there's going to be some challenges, all right? Um, he's in Seattle. Uh, the person he needs to coordinate with is probably out of that London office. It's, um, he has a global organization, so he's probably looking at dozens of emails and conference calls across multiple time zones, all right? Um, Yammer, all right? So if he's going to input, he needs input from an office halfway around the world, um, or a conference call, he probably should crowdsource, right? Put that out there to the London office for Yammer and say, hey, who can put me in touch with the safety measure or what, are, what is our standard operating procedure for something like this? Um, Yammer would be a great way to put your hands on that information. All right, so here's some additional scenarios. Um, I focused on Yammer, Teams, and Skype here. Uh, again, I don't know who in my organization can help me. That's Yammer. 
All right, if I want to keep a record of what we discussed during the meetings, conversation, links, and files, that's Teams, all right? Yammer um, is not conversation or chat-based, it's just posts. So if you're having a conversation and you want to keep those notes or files in all one place, again, Teams. Um, I want to quickly share a file with the team. Well, I can put it out there on Yammer and post it so everybody receives it, or it could be a specific group within Yammer. And again, Teams. I can put it on my team site and everyone will have access to that file quickly. I want to integrate with outside tools like Salesforce. Well, we talked about that on Teams, right? It's no longer just within Microsoft. Um, Microsoft is learning to play well with others, right? So we all know that um, maybe I'm not using Dynamics to track my sales leads. Maybe I'm using something else. Um, there we go. Now we can interact or integrate with outside tools as well. If I want to deliver a presentation, uh, this is going to, initially I was thinking Skype, but you know what? With Teams' new integration and the new improvements in voice and video, I think Teams is going to be the lead over this, all right? But again, I can deliver a presentation from Skype, and within Teams, Yammer, no. It's just, a, it's just a method for posting and sharing that information. If I want to create a document, I can do so within Yammer, and I can also do it within Teams, all right? But um, it depends. If I have a team, uh, I'm going to probably go with the team again, right? Let's keep everything in one spot out there. And this way, we know exactly one source for, of where everything is contained. If I need to have a quick one-on-one -on -one conversation, that's going to be Skype. I can look, I can uh, see who's available, and then I can IM that person, all right? So I can either call them, I can video chat with them, or I can just send them a quick IM. And I want to promote a company event on social media, all right? So remember, we can connect with different apps. Um, we can connect with different um, outside tools like Twitter, Facebook. Again, that's going to be Teams, all right? So uh, think of it as if you have upcoming events or uh, things that you want to get out there, promote it and share it, you're going to want to use Teams for that. And then I found a comprehensive white paper, and I want to share it with my entire organization. That would be Yammer. Just sending it globally to everybody, hey, look what I found. This is going to help us. Um, we're deploying a new tool. Look at this. This is a great tutorial on how to get started in here. Let's go ahead and share it with everybody. Now, when we get into planner versus project online, it can get a little bit trickier, all right? I'm going to jump into a couple more use case scenarios for project and um, planner as well. So we'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and go through here. Um, again, if you can think, these are going to be pulling from, from what we just went through. Uh, if you're resistant to learning a new tool, Planner is easier. If you're unfamiliar with different project management tools or your um, level of project management or maturity level in your processes is lower, you may want to use Planner. If you want to be more agile or use Kanban, Planner right now. However, remember, Project Online is going to introduce or incorporate that as well. If you need to track issues or risks or you really need to, um, uh, you know, uh, have a portfolio level view or you want to automate workflow, that's when you're really going to lean on Project Online, all right? So it really depends on the type of work that you're managing and then um, how um, the type of work, how your teams collaborate with, with one another and how you work, all right? So all of these tools integrate with one another, which is Pretty amazing, all right? So it's just getting familiar with the different tools and learning how to use them. All right, and this is just another one. This is, again, another use case scenario where she's in a, she has a planning effort for a tech conference. Um, she t spends most of her time coordinating tasks by email and briefing progress on the team by phone. She's not a project manager, though, and she does not have the time to learn a new uh, tool. So again, this is a great, scenario or use case scenario for planner. Now, if she needs to track issues and risks and dependencies across projects, then, of course, Raul is going to lean on Project Online. All right, so he's a project manager. He wants to see projects across the utilization. He wants visibility to the status of all of his projects in one location. That, again, is going to be your Project Center view and Project Online, 
all right? So, and there is the best of both worlds because of integration. So you can have situations where you want the project manager to have the, pro uh, the flexibility to choose which of these they're going to use. They can still associate files with individual tasks. There's a central repository, a SharePoint site that's created for projects, and they can manage um, smaller tasks or efforts using Planner and link them directly to um, a task in Microsoft Project, all right? Now, I did do a feature comparison that gives you an idea of what you can and cannot do between the two, all right? But I want to go ahead and I'm going to stop sharing because I know we're going to start running out of time. I want to open it up to some questions. So it's hard for me to read the chat window in here. So I'm going to stop sharing for just a moment and open it up for questions. But I did want to, again, let me just talk about those two announcements real quick, sorry. Project Professional and Agile coming together and Project Professional integration with Planner. If you have any questions about these, we should be getting a blog out later today. You can look at our site and visit our blogs there. All right, but um, please reach out to us. Let us know if you have any questions or you want us to help you out with some of these tools. So let me just open up my chat window and scroll through here. So if you have any questions, let me just scroll through. I know the beginning, nobody could hear me. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right. My organization is challenged with the change from user-based versus device-based licensing in regard to Project Online. That is delaying our use. Okay, so let me, Matt, ask this question. So you're challenged with um, user-based versus device-based licensing. All right, if you use Project Online, and I'm not sure if this is answering your question, um, for every Project Online license that you have, you get to use it on three different devices. So my mobile device, my laptop, and a tablet, or a um, something like that. Um, you can use it on multiple devices, but you do have to have a subscription. And that also is one of the things that I mentioned earlier in the conversation, was that if you're deciding between um, Project Online or Planner. Planner is free. Project Online does require a monthly uh, subscription. So, um, and it also depends on your security at your organization, whether you allow users to access from um, mobile devices or not. So you have the ability of turning those things on and off if you need to. Um, let's see, are the team files stored separate from planner files? And can I have them share the same file repository? Okay, so if you have a team site and you have files stored in there, and then you have a planner, um, yes, you can integrate those. Um, th there, there's going to be a lot more improvement within team. So you should be able to, in the near future, integrate with Planner as well so that you can actually assign a task to somebody in the plan and have everything connected to your team site there. All right, so look for those changes. A lot of what we covered today and the differences between the tool are going to continue to change as Microsoft keeps um, uh, making these new releases. And where can I learn about how to incorporate the Agile features in Microsoft Project? That came from Tracy. Um, Tracy, that is a great question. Uh, we um, are looking and greatly anticipating. We don't have the details yet on the um, on the changes that are coming out, at least I don't just yet. I was trying to get, um, trying to dig around this morning so that I could share that with you. But if you email us at info at ppmworks.com, we'll be happy to get that information out to you and let you know um, when the changes are anticipated and what you can expect in there. Ah, here's one. We have many complaints about performance and response time in Save and Publish. Um, there's probably a few things going on. Uh, your response time in Save should just be very, it should be very quick. And your project should not take more than um, 
a minute to publish, and a minute's pretty long, and that would be a very lengthy project, there's a few things that might be going on. You probably have some cleanup in your queue. Um, you might not have enough resources devoted um, to, uh, to project, but there are some things that we could take a look at, all right? Um, but you shouldn't have a delay or uh, you shouldn't have users complaining about the time that it takes to save and publish. That would warrant um, looking into and making sure that there isn't uh, corruption in a project file or something going on that's taking away from those resources. And then somebody else, Allah, has said that they implemented Project Online and they love the functionality. Great, thank you for sharing that with us. Love to hear that. Um, we're very passionate about the tool. We've been using the tool for, um, since the, well, since Project Central came back, back out in 2000. So a very, very long time. So a lot of changes, Microsoft is always continuing to update this. So stick, um, you know, keep um, your ear to the ground. Um, keep checking back at our website. We'll be happy to share those changes to you, uh, with you, excuse me, as they come through. I don't see any other questions, and I know it is one o'clock, so I promised you that I'd get you in and out in an hour. So I do want to thank you for joining us today.